who cares? Who cares about me? Who cares about you? Who cares about your family? Who cares about your future? It's a wonderful thing about our Christian faith that we believe and trust a God who sees us as we are and still cares about us. Yeah. He sees us as we are and still loves us. And we don't have to do anything to make him love us. We really don't. We don't have to be perfect. We don't have to do a thing. When we were without Christ, God loved us. And the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And I just thank God for his love and his providential care. The verse I'll be speaking on is Romans 8.28. Right. For we know, we know, that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and to those who are called according to his purpose, we know. Now, now I've been preaching, you see how long I've been preaching, I, mean, I have a note of it here. I've been preaching now for six to seven years. And I've been pastoring now for 60 years. 60 years. And yet, in all that time, there's a verse, a word in a verse that has caused me to do some thinking. I'm trying so hard. I'm, I'm, I'm an academic person. I taught at Temple University and they asked me to become the dean of the graduate school. I turned it down because I didn't want to confuse my um, abilities with my core, my core of this ministry. And, um, but there's a word, there's a word with all my qualifications, there's a word that I'm, uh, I have been struggling to define. And I believe there's, there's, some, there's somebody who can help me define that word. If, if, I don't know, how many of you have a pen and a piece of paper you can write this word down? Anybody? A pen and a piece of paper to write this word down? I will study for you because I need your help in helping me to define that word. It's a word in that verse. Tell me when you're ready. I'll spell it for you. It's, it starts with A and then L, the second L. That's it. Go. Oh. Within the context of that verse, all of things work together. How do you define that all? How do you define that? In terms of your experiences, but many times you've read it, how do you define that word all? All. Now I can I can tell you the truth. In all the years I've read all, but I thought it meant some. <laughs> Are you there? Yeah. Are you there? That, that some things work together for good. A few things work together for good. And yet the verse says, the anointed verse of scripture says, all. How could it be all? When there's so many negative things that happen, challenging things that happen, sicknesses that happen, accidents that happen. So many people have had problems in their families and problems in their marriage. How, how, how could all things work together for good? Some things. But the Bible says, not just the Bible, the Spirit of God who wrote the Word says, all things. You have to make a decision. You have to make a decision. And I've had to make a decision to interpret all as all. Because if we simply interpret all as some, then we think some things work together for good, and then other things you have to put somewhere else. But when you take the word of God as it is, that all things, then I look back at my own circumstances, my own journey, my own challenges. And, and by the way, being a pastor has challenges. Especially when you're working with the 
people of God. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm sorry. When you're working with the saints of God. <laughs> when you're working with the saints of God, you have challenges. And this is, and this is spiritual work. This is not secular work. You expect those in secular work, but when you when you're dealing with the saints of the Most High, yeah. <laughs> the Bible says all things, all things work. Now, it also says that all things work. The word work. You can't work if you don't have a job. True or false? Which means everything has a job. All things have a job. So they can work. We don't always know what work they're doing, but they are working because the Bible says that all things work. And then it says that all things work together. So they're at work every single day, every single moment, every single hour, and they're working together. All of the, the total sum of your life experiences are working together. And the Bible says for good. But not just for good, because it doesn't work for good to everybody. Ah, it only works for good to those who love the Lord and to those who are called according to his purpose. And we are called. Amen. And we love the Lord. Amen. And therefore, all things, all of our, the sum total of our life experiences, <clears throat> the good things, the, the not so good things, the challenging things, the difficult things, the, the things that make you celebrate, and the things that brought tears to your eyes and to your heart, all of those things are working yes. together yes. for good to those who love the Lord and to those who are called according to his purposes. Now, every one of us has had some negative experiences. Is there anyone here who has never had a negative experience? <laughs> Is anyone here who has not had a disturbing experience? Is there anyone who has... Let me see how many persons have had some negative experiences in your life. Anybody? Just put your hand up. Okay. Uh, by the way, by the way, I, I brought some. <laughs> for the negative experiences. If you can think of some negative experiences you've had, just throw them in this bucket. Man, this thing is full. It's full, it's full, it's full. It's full. The negative, we all have, we all had negative experiences, painful experiences, challenging experiences, and sometimes experiences from people we don't expect to have them from. True or false? True. Put them all. We put them all in here. At my age, I've had challenging experiences. And then, how many of you have had some blessed experiences? You know they're blessed. You know. Sort of in here. The negative ones are here, the blessings are there. And both of them tend to make us. Both of them tend to shape shape us. Let me give you my own story, part of my own story. <clears throat> I got saved in the Church of God when I was 11 years old. And I got knitted. See, it's one thing to be saved in, but to be knitted into the fabric of it. I got knitted into the fabric of the Church of God when I was 11, and I went to vacation back to school. And we all were in a classroom, and to my surprise, the pastor was teaching the children ages 9 to 12. 
I mean, I've seen a pastor teaching the children the age of 12. Pastors tend to teach the adults. But he was teaching the children ages 9 to 12. I was 11, so I was in his class. And he had handwork to do. And then he saw me doing nothing. He says, what are you doing? I said, I'm doing nothing. I'm finished. He said, you're finished? All the other kids are doing this, and you are finished? He said, but if you're finished, why don't you come and be my helper? Wow. Imagine... An 11 year old boy being invited to become the pastor's helper. His helper. One sentence if you're finished, come and be my helper. That one sentence changed my life, changed my vision of myself. I left there feeling I'm the pastor's helper. I am I'm somebody. Five minutes before that, I was nobody. But right now, I am somebody. I'm the pastor's helper. Yeah, yeah. I became his helper. At age 11. At age 11. Age 11. He had no idea that that little boy who he invited to be his helper would one day succeed him as pastor of that church. He had no idea. He elevated me in my mind, in my vision of myself. He knitted me into his life for his, his family's life. And now I remember one day he began preaching about tithing. I, I, I couldn't figure out what typing meant. I couldn't even spell the word. It doesn't, it doesn't spell the way it sounds, you know. <laughs> and I realized it had to do with money. And I saw him in the, in, the, in the sanctuary one day and I said, Pastor, I don't have any money to type. I don't have any money to type. But I have an idea. I go to school from Monday to Friday. I'm free on Saturdays. I will come to your house and do whatever work you and your wife want me to do as my tithe. So every Saturday, I walked for two miles to go to their house and help him and his wife with whatever. She liked gardening, so I would do gardening with her. I like gardening to this day because I started doing gardening with her. I would pack books to ship out to different churches in different parts of the country. Every Saturday, from 9 to 12, that was my tithe of service. Sometimes people think you don't have money. You can serve God as your tithe. Yes. Amen. You can give God your time if you don't have the money. Yes. And then one day, his wife called me upstairs. She said, why don't you wash up and come upstairs? Because it's 12 o'clock. I'd wash up, go upstairs, and I'd have a sandwich before I walk back the two miles to my home. And so she called me up to wash up, wash my hands, come upstairs for a sandwich, and I wash my hands. I went up for a sandwich, and she said something to me. The pastor's wife said something to me in one sentence that absolutely, totally confused me, baffled me. She said, she used to call her husband daddy. Now she's the first person I've heard in our culture calling her husband daddy. But I guess the children called him daddy, she called him daddy. She said, daddy and I, and she says, Milton, daddy and I can't wait to attend your graduation from college. I choked. I was eating a sandwich and I choked. Because college, college, college is for smart people. College is for bright people. College is not for people like me. I've never known a single person in my family who went to college. Nobody ever mentioned college to me. College was not part of my vocabulary. It wasn't part of my thinking. But she stunned me when she said that. And I remember 
after I left their home, walking back to my house, the two miles, I keep saying, how could she, an intelligent woman, think of me if I could go to college? That's for smart people. But you know, that one sentence gave me a new perspective of myself. I said, she thinks it. If she thinks it, then I'm going to work very hard. I'm going to try to get afternoon lessons because she believes I could go to college. She believes I could go to college. I brought her to Philadelphia a number of years ago. Her husband had passed. And she's now a widow. They're older. And I invited her to Philadelphia. She came on our campus. She stood there. She stood there. And then I walked her to another building, which is named after Smith. The name was Smith. Smith Hall. And she stood there. And then she came back another time, and she brought her grown-up children to see a campus of the CCF Hall. And I'm quite sure she was remembering that one sentence. Oh, by the way, at that time, I was also teaching in the Graduate School of Temple University. The same boy who could never have imagined that he could go to college ended up teaching in the Graduate School of Temple University. And that's not all. One day, some of the, some of the um, staff persons of the university called me and said, we need to talk to you, we need to see you. And so I went into the meeting. And they said, we have decided to offer you a position in this university. A position? Yes. We decided to offer you the position of dean of the Graduate School of Education. Me? Dean? At the Graduate School of Education? I didn't accept it. Just the other day, my son was talking to me about it. He said, Dad, why, did you ex why didn't you accept it? And I said, I didn't accept it because I didn't want my interest in education to compete with my purpose in life. My purpose in life is what God called me to. And that's what I'm sticking with. But I'm just trying to say, sometimes a single sentence at the right moment Amen. can change a person's life. Amen. Yeah. And so we have, we have the, which basket was this one? Which bucket was this one? This is the red face. Yeah. <laughs> and, and which basket was this one? Yeah. 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 Let me give you another illustration. I was 14 years old. When my mother, first of all, I used to get a beating every Sunday night for having gone to church. Every Sunday night. I had lost my vision in this eye because of all the slaps I've gotten to my face as a child for going to church. I was 14, and my mother said, All you have on your mind is church, church, go and live in the church. I was put out. I became homeless. I had all of my personal belongings, my school books, my Bible, and my hymnal in a pillowcase across my back. And I remember walking and walking and sitting by a stream across from a cemetery. And I began to sing all the way, and my Savior leads me. What if I could ask beside? Can I doubt this tender mercy who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divine discomfort, here my faith in him to dwell, for I know whatever he falls me. How do you end it? What? Jesus. Jesus doeth all things well. All things well. Amen. All things well. So then what do I do? Based on all things work together for good, and that Jesus doing all things well, what do I do with these two containers? Which container is this one? <laughs> <laughs> huh? 
<laughs> and what kind of thing is this one? Challenges. So, how do I harmonize that? Based on what the Bible says, I take all the challenges in this bucket and I pour them all in the blessing bucket because all things. Amen. We tend to keep the two buckets separate. Wow. And so we keep going over the hurts and the pains and the challenges and the difficulties and what she said about me and what he said about me. But when you empty it all in the blessings bucket, you realize that the Bible says all of this have a job. There is no experience you have had that is unemployed. All things work together for good to those who love the Lord and to those who are called according to his purpose. So, what is the message today? Look back at your life. See the challenges and the pains and empty them all in the blessings bucket. Are you there? Because God is at work here. Molding you, transforming you, developing you, blessing you, even in the pain. And all of it work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Do you stand with me please? Regardless of the pains that you have experienced, challenges you've experienced, the misunderstandings, even in some cases the abuse, Put them all in the blessings bucket because all of them yes. work uh, together. together. For what? Good. For good. To whom? Good. To those who love the Lord and are called to His purpose. I used to blame my mother for having put me out at age 14. And now, because I put that in this bucket, I thank her. She's not alive. I thank her. She had four boys, five boys. I'm the youngest. Every one of us put out. And then when she got older, my wife and I were the only ones able to take her in. And I would see her sitting in our home, tears coming down. I said, Mom, what are you crying about? She says, I gave you hell. And you're the only child of mine who could take me in. Let's go our heads, please. I want you to take all the negative experiences that you've had and see them and put it in the blessings bucket because all things work together. All the pains, the challenges, the difficulties, the misunderstandings, the things people have said about you, all of them can work for good if you allow them, if you give God the chance to use them for your benefit. Yes. Heavenly Father, we just praise and we thank you for your love and you. your grace and your power and how you continue to lead us, some through the waters and some through the floods and some through great sorrows but all through the blood. We've all had negatives and we've all had positives. But all the negatives can be positive if we put our trust in you. You will cause them to work hard together for our good. For our good. We just thank you, Lord, for every person here. Minister to every spirit. And as we read, let us read with the truth of your word, Romans 8, 28, that all, not some, all things can work for good if we love you. Bless us today, anoint us today, challenge us today. We ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.